Who doesn't love fossils? Well, in this tutorial we'll focus on fossils as another form of strong evidence that evolution has occurred over time. Fossilization is one of the, the um, original forms of evidence for evolution and still forms um, a whole world of fascination for young people and older people all over the world, mostly because it reveals some of the extraordinary life forms that have existed in the past on Earth and, for whatever reason, have become extinct and no longer exist. So we'll have a look at um, various ways that fossils can be fossilized um, and some of the different kinds of fossils and, um, and look at the nature of the fossil record. So on this page we're just, uh, just a few photographs and we'll come back to these shortly but um, these are some of the different ways that fossilization or fossils can be preserved. So you've got amber, so small insects trapped in amber, um, which is kind of sap from trees. You've got moulds that have formed uh, in the shape of um, an organism that has died and decayed away. So you've got moulds here. Uh, you've got casts, which is an impression uh, left by a dead organism showing the shape and outline of the organism. And you've got um, skeletons and so on that have been trapped in sediment. Over time, and there are a few other ways as well, but these would be some of the key ones. We'll focus on each of these in turn, and uh, and then a couple of the other ways as well. So, what are the two different kinds of fossils? Well, there, there are fossils that are called body fossils, um, which actually are the remains of living organisms. So these could be uh, skeletons, or shells, or other parts of, um, of a body. Or there are trace fossils, which, um, which um, show the traces of where fossils once were, but the org uh, tr sorry, traces of where the organism once wa uh, was, but the organism itself has decayed away and um, just left uh, some kind of evidence of the activities or shape or body of the organism in its place. The parts of living things that are most likely to be fossilized are going to be the hard parts. So the body construction of an organism will determine, determine the likelihood of it being fossilized. So if it, uh, it has a number of hard parts, then it's likely that part of the organism will be fossilized. The soft parts, or an organism made up of mostly soft parts, is less likely to be fossilized because soft parts will decay away more quickly. If it's an organism that is prone to predation, then it's likely to be eaten before it can be fossilized. Some of your methods of fossilization can be described as per mineralization. where water carrying um, very fine sediments and minerals seeps into the hollow parts of bones and shells and um, gets compressed and hardened into rock over time. So rock forms on the inside of some of the hollow parts of organisms, kind of um, preserving it from the inside out. This is called permineralization. You've got freezing, for example, in um, permafrosts, where you've got uh, whole organisms like woolly mammoths fully preserved got compression, where a, an organism may be compressed under layers of sediment, um, where the soft parts then decay and the hard parts like the skeleton can be preserved in the sediment. Um, and you've got entrapment, for example small insects or organisms being trapped in things like amber. So often, um, often to be fossilized has to involve rapid burial, because if a body is exposed for any length of time it's likely to be um, decayed by bacteria and fungi or predated upon by scavengers or other predators. So it has to be rapidly buried so that it is away from the effects of erosion um, and weather and predators. This is going to allow for the preservation 
or body parts. Um, the uh, fossilization itself is also dependent uh, very much on the environment. So it's dependent on the environment that the organism lives in. One of the most um, common environments that organisms get fossilized in is in um, lakes or at the bottom of lakes. So here you are relying on sediments to form. So your animal may die and uh, be caught in the lake or it might be an animal that lives in the lake and floats down to the lake bed and then over time the soft parts will decay away leaving the skeleton and then you're going to get sediments forming over time which help to preserve the fossil and then often what happens is that, uh, well not often, but sometimes what happens is that the water over many thousands if not hundreds of thousands if not millions of years that water can evaporate and dry up and then erosion will start to act on the sediment and will start to wear the sediment away thus exposing the fossil many years after it was originally buried. It's far more likely that fossilization is going to occur um, in a, an aquatic environment or a marine environment of some kind rather than on land. So water is more likely, on the land it's less likely unless there's rapid burial and uh, a shielding from the elements. What we mean by the fossil record is um, a record of all the fossils that have ever been found, of which there are um, thousands upon thousands of fossils. But it's very important to remember that the fossil record represents only a very small percentage of all life that's ever lived on Earth. All right, so very, very small percentage of all life that has ever lived on Earth. Most organisms that are lived um, have not been living in the right conditions to be fossilized. So the majority of organisms that have ever lived have not been fossilized. And what we have as fossils represents a very small proportion. So it's not a record of all life on Earth, but it still gives us a very, a very interesting insight into the, uh, some of the major shifts and changes in life over time, and also some of the extraordinary organisms that have existed in the past that no longer exist today. Let's have another quick look at some of the types of fossils that can form. So here's a, an example of the preservation or entrapment of an insect in amber. Here's an example of a mould. Alright, so the organism has um, been covered in sediment, but the organism itself has fully decayed away leaving the outline of the organism that was there. And you can see the process shown here. This shows a cast. So this would have started off as a mould, where um, a trilobite like this has um, uh, been covered in silt and sediment. The trilobite itself has decayed away, leaving a mould, but the mould is then filled up with further sediment that has formed a, a kind of a 3D um, representation of the original organism. So this is all rock, but it's in the shape of the original trilobite. This is called a cast. And if you shoot back to the original page, I may well have labelled this incorrectly on the first page. So my apologies for that. So we'll just get that right. So this is the cast, this is the mould. Here we have um, frozen specimens, frozen very quickly, snap frozen almost, of woolly mammoths, um, frozen in the permafrost of the Arctic.
very interesting way of being fossilised and extraordinarily preserved specimens. Peat bogs are another um, place that fossilisation can tend to occur relatively easily as an animal or a human or whatever fall or even plants die or fall into a peat bog and get trapped in the in the um, sticky mud and ooze and sink down and get covered up uh, reasonably quickly and preserved. Um, this is where some of the famous ice men, so to speak, have been found from Europe in uh, various peat bogs and preserved rather remarkably as shown on the left. 